uh, we met maybe uh, if I'm not mistaken we have met during your first years of studies your maybe second year and also third year of study uh, anyway uh, I met you guys since uh, your um, first um, year of studies in MGIT anyway uh, given that is the topic, um, state space analysis, and um, as for introduction, basically uh, I did mention uh, just now what actually our main objective um, of uh, re with respect to this chapter. And before we get into um, our objective, uh, if you can read over here, it says that Laplace transform is used to obtain the transfer function model representing linear time invariant physical system utilizing block diagram to interconnect system. In other words, we can say that uh, you, you have learned about Laplace transform and normally Laplace transform will be used uh, to uh, come out with the transfer function of your uh, system plan. And your system plan could be um, linear and could be uh, non-linear but and, and also it could be from a physical system you come up from um, gear connection and come up with a transfer function of that system maybe uh, you learn uh, previously you learn about uh, from um, rlc circuit you come up with a transfer function uh, maybe from uh, mechanical uh, mass spring damper system come up with a transfer function so that was what uh, that was what you have learned uh, previously in Dr. Fitri course which is control system and in, in this uh, course we try to extend our knowledge in terms of how um, the one that called as a state space um, equation or state space model so here uh, the, the main objective of state space uh, model is um, most likely the same as what you seen in a transfer function model but uh, it's an alternative way or alternative um, method to represent your system so uh, it is known as a state space model okay uh, the main objective of this topic is what we're trying to do is we here from differential equation we try to construct uh, a state space model yeah um, I think I will skip this one uh, it's about time varying control system time domain means T uh, in if we have a Laplace uh, domain uh, normally it's um, uh, represented in terms of S uh, S is the Laplace operator Okay, this is very important. Where we, in state space modeling, uh, what we have here is that our system will be represented via matrices uh, and also known as a vector uh, in some of the reference. And um, in the matrix, we, uh, matrices will be represented as, uh, uh, there are a few matrices in our state space um, equation or state space model um, each of the matrices uh, will uh, describe us about the input the output uh, of the system okay as um, i also mentioned just now um, the state space model is an alternative method of uh, system modeling other than we use a uh, differential equation and also maybe a uh, transfer function okay this slide is highly important. You need to remember this one. Uh, or you need to get into uh, revision if you, what I can say. It's a popular question in your assessment. Um, motivation of state space modeling. So why did we use, uh, why do we use uh, state space model in uh, modeling our system? Normally, uh, for control system de uh, designer or engineers, uh, they, uh, they prefer MATLAB uh, to do their simulations. And of course, uh, if 
uh, you look at MATLAB, uh, it is easier if we uh, represent our system or represent uh, our calculation objective in terms of a matrix. So that's why uh, state space modeling is uh, it's convenient in terms of uh, processing our system in uh, computer simulation. And also we we know that um, for state space model, it handles multiple input and outputs. So since we have um, arranged our system in terms of our matrices, so it can accept uh, or it can um, allow uh, multiple input and multiple output system to be uh, processed or to be uh, compute easily. And um, uh, this is uh, quite crucial as well. It provides more information about the system. Uh, what does it mean by more information about system? We will, we can predict, okay? We can predict the future behavior of the system based on the derivative action of um, uh, the state space uh, equation. So maybe later on you will understand uh, what uh, does it mean over here. And um, of course, since uh, it can handle multiple inputs, multiple outputs, um, you can also uh, uh, apply it in a uh, more complicated or large scale system. So this is sort of um, why we use um, state space uh, modeling or state space equation. <coughs> okay, maybe uh, you guys are familiar with this um, equation. This is known as um, a differential equation. So our main objective in this topic is from this type of um, system representation, we try to convert it into um, an equation which is known as a state space model. All right, maybe I skip this one. All right, in summary, okay, if you have a system, uh, if you look at the top uh, box over there, system input uh, in terms of uh, with respect to time, u of t, y of t, so that is our time domain system. We can um, represent our time domain system whether last time with a differential equation or a transfer function. And we know that in differential equation, the system is represented in terms of a time domain. On the other hand, for transfer function, our system is represented in um, states, uh, sorry, in Laplace domain or in S domain. So we need to do some transformation from time into Laplace domain. And another one that we try to learn over here is the state space equation. If you look at the format of the state space equation, we have x dot equals to ax plus bu y equals to cx plus du, where a, b, c, and d are the matrices that I mentioned just now. For a, maybe it's no, it is known as uh, input matrix, uh, sorry, uh, state matrix, and b, it is known as input matrix. And c, as well as d, normally c is the output matrix. Um, what? y in general, the equation of, uh, down there, y equal to cx plus uh, du, uh, in general, is that is, a, that is a, an output equation where c is related to the states itself and d is related to the input of the output or in other words, you can say that d is related to disturbance of our system. All right, um, if you look at the arrow down here, we can interchange um, uh, our system representation, whether from differential equation into state space, state space into transfer function, and vice versa. Um, okay. Um, let's say we have a linear differential equation um, stated over here like 
d to the power of n y divided by d t to the power of n blah 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 blah. So that kind of differential equation can be represented uh, in state space form um, as stated in this in this slide down here. So what we're trying to do is what we should consider the state, okay? The state of our system depends on what is the highest power or the 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 order of our uh, differential equation. Maybe uh, this slide is not uh, as in informative as we try to uh, underst understand the system. Maybe later on, yeah? Okay, let's say we have a state differential equation like this. We have uh, x1, x2, uh, dot, 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 in, up until xn, okay? And let's say we, for example, yeah, maybe I can um, catch a bit over here. Oh. Okay. Let's say we are considering only these two, x1 dot and x2 dot, meaning that we have two differential equation and the high, the highest power of our uh, most probably uh, not not um, let's say uh, it is not certain un until we get the full information of our system. Um, most probably, this uh, differential equation, the highest power of our differential equation, is two. Okay, maybe let's say we 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 stick to. The highest power of this differential equation is 2, means that x1 is, um, let's say, uh, the equation over here has uh, the order of, uh, it's a second order differential equation. This is also a second order differential equation. And from these two equation, we can say that if we try to combine these two state uh, differential equation, our states will be uh, uh, the number of uh, state variable in our system will be four in this case because we have two up here. The first equation has two state variables, and the second equation have another two um, state variables. So that is uh, more or less um, a rough idea of what uh, we have. Um, in mind before we try to convert it into state space um, equation. Okay, this is what uh, we have from, sorry, this uh, sort of equation. When we try to convert this different differential equation into a state space, this is what we're gonna get. So we have the first equation over here uh, and the second equation over here. Let's say we uh, we, we omit this x and eh? maybe we consider this two. Instead, our state uh, our state space equation will have x1 dot and also x2 dot and x1 dot is our first equation. If you remember, uh, how do we process uh, our matrices? x1, okay. Uh, if you would like to write down back your equation over here, okay, you must follow the multiplication of this matrix. Means that A11 times X1, A12 times X2, and so on. So, so this particular matrix okay, is our state matrix. And this particular matrix where we have x1, x2, dot, 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 up to the xn, maybe we should uh, omit this one at, at the moment. It's known as our state variable. And this B matrix is known as our input matrix. And U over here is our input, number of inputs. 
All right. Okay. This is the definition of um, the state space equation. Here we have u as our input vector, y is as our output vector. And um, normally for input, uh, it can be a multiple input system. And if you have a multiple input system, you should write your inputs in a column vector or matrix looks like this. This is uh, if, let's say we have two inputs, so our input vector or input matrix over here, we have a two times one matrix for input vector. And this is for our output vector. And also the output vector is represented in terms of a column vector over here. So if you have two outputs, maybe you should have um, two by one matrix for your output vector. And for the state vector, the state vector also a column vector. And the state vector this is the information of the internal variable of the system. So it is the states of our system that we try to uh, put over here. And the dimension of or, or number of internal state will largely depends on the order of our system. The order of our differential equation. Sorry, not the system. The order of our differential equation. So the number of uh, states over here depends on n. And if you look at a uh, previous slide, uh, information of next value or next state okay, is given by this differential of our uh, derivative of our states. So here we have x dot. x dot means next state vector. And x dot, uh, for example, here is our x dot. We have two x dot over here, x1 and x2. So um, let's say uh, if we consider this is our uh, next state vector. So in our system, only we we only have x1 dot and also x2 dot. And the next state vector, okay, uh, will uh, give us the knowledge of um, where is our state are going, whether it's going in a positive direction or negative direction, and also how fast is the uh, the the states are going or how fast the system are uh, responding, and it's determined by its magnitude. So here is the definition of x dot or this next state factor. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, the standard form of state space model uh, is given by x dot equals to ax plus bu. That is known as our state uh, equation. And for y equal to cx plus du is known as our output equation. So um, I recall back what we have learned. Here, A is known as our um, input matrix, uh, sorry, state matrix. B is our input matrix over here. And C also associated to our um, state matrix. And D is normally um, regarded as our disturbance and in our course, normally D will be equals to zero. Just for this particular course, yeah. But um, this is the, if you consider a standard form of state space model, you should also consider D, uh, matrix D in your output equation. Um, I hope that you read this slide uh, previously, uh, maybe last two weeks. Uh, that's why I a bit um, fast uh, in this session because I would like to emphasize on the example later on because uh, you I think you 
uh, you can get better understanding if you have a look at the uh, proper example. Uh, just now, I just telling you uh, the basic or the definition of this um, state space model, and sometimes it's quite. I, I know it's quite hard for you guys to um, clearly catch what I, I try to uh, explain over here. Uh, maybe with the, the aid of example later on, uh, you can get a clear picture of um, how to develop or how to uh, represent our system in state space model. Don't worry. All right. Um, for linear state space equation, it's represented by uh, this type of uh, equation. We have input and output equation uh, at the top uh, x dot. Uh, equals to ax plus bu is known as our uh, state uh, equation and uh, y equals to cx plus du is known as our uh, output equation okay this is considered for uh, a linear, linear time invariant system or linear system like in other words uh, for non-linear system it's known uh, sorry it is given by this kind of um, state space equation um, for your information, uh, our course only cater on the linear system. So we maybe if you get into your postgraduate studies, maybe you uh, might find this kind of a non-linear system representation of state-space model. But uh, in our course, we focus on linear system. We try to understand how to tackle linear system first. Okay, if you look at the equation itself, equation of a uh, state space model can also be represented in a block diagram. So this block diagram is very important for you um, to know and to uh, familiarize. And um, if, uh, in, in other words, this is uh, another famous question in your assessment. So we given a, a state space uh, equation. Please come up with a block diagram of state, state space equation. So please remember how to come up with this block diagram. Okay, I will explain how this block diagram uh, come about. If you look at the first equation, we have the state equation, which is x dot equals to a x plus b u. Basically, this equation. The, the heart of this equation is coming from this summation uh, junction. Here we have x dot and here we have a summation of a and b where a and b coming from a um, multiplied the product of a and x or a multiplied by x b should be multiplied by u. So you come up this with this junction first and label it as x dot and think about how do we, how can we uh, construct this equation uh, using this summation junction so you you need to know that x dot equals to ax plus bu so this junction should coming from a times x this junction should come in from B times U. And how how do I get X and how do I get U? Okay, U is quite simple because U is considered our input. You can just plug into a, a, a line over here and label it as U. However, for X, okay, remember that this is our X dot. And if we integrate our X, uh, at our X dot, it will give us X. Meaning that you can use this junction or this point to get your x and times with a sum it with the at the summation point over here, giving the complete equation of the first equation over here. And the next equation is coming from or uh, the next equation or our output equation is given by y equals to cx plus du. And to construct this equation in terms of a block diagram, you must consider another 
um, summation point or summation junction. So in this equation, y equals to cx plus du, meaning that you must have y and you must have a summation of c times x. So since we have x over here, just uh, build uh, or just make uh, another block uh, label is with c. And for the other one, we have d times u so coming from the u that we defined earlier we get to the multiplication of u and d over here and both um, block or both um, terms will be added into to become our output um, of the system so you need to know how to construct this sort of uh, block diagram of a state space equation. Remember that this state space block diagram is coming from the equation itself, the equation of state space model. We have um, state equation at the top and our output equation given by y equals to cx plus du. All right. Um, here, I would like to um, get into some of uh, what you have learned previously, where uh, if you look at um, our electrical network, we have capacitor, resistor, inductor. Uh, that is known as the physical system. And our physical system can be, uh, if, uh, can be written in terms of uh, differential equation. Uh, maybe from differential equation, get into transfer function, also can. Um, and in this course, what we're trying to do, we try to convert this physical system up until our state space model. So from physical system to state space model, meaning that we need to go through or we need to come up with the differential equation of our physical system. So this is for electrical network, where we know that for electrical network, normally we have capacitor, resistor, and inductor, knowing, uh, considering as uh, a passive um, um, a, uh, passive components, and um, the relationship between voltage and current is given uh, by this table, voltage current, current voltage, and voltage and charge, and also um, the impedance given by uh, this, also available in this table. So from information that we got here, we, we can get or we can come up with a differential equation over here. And from the differential equation, we will try to make a state space model of our system. So that is for electrical network. I'm not going to get into uh, details of how from here into here, uh, because I think you learn this thing uh, before this, but I try to focus is how do you come up um, a state space model if um, you've been given a physical system. Okay, this is an example of uh, electrical network. I think we have a few more over here. We have translational mechanical system. We have spring, a damper, and also mass. Normally, uh, spring damper uh, and mass, uh, we will try to use this relationship, force and displacement, in order for us to come up with the differential, the differential equation of the system. Um, and in this translational mechanical system, free body diagram is uh, very important, and very crucial, in, uh, uh, in order for you to get um, the uh, differential equation of your mechanical translational mechanical system. For example, here we have a physical system. This is a translational mechanical system, and this is the free body diagram. First, you come up with a free body diagram of the physical system. From this free body diagram, you uh, came out uh, come up with the uh, differential equation based on uh, the force relationship of forces uh, around this free body diagram. Uh, you should um, know that 
um, sum of forces uh, norm is um, should be equal to zero or f equal to sum of um, f equals to m a sum of forces equals to m a so from that um, uh, from that uh, idea we come up with a different equation and from different equation differential equation we will um, build or uh, we will set up our system in terms of a state space model so um, in our course okay in our course uh, maybe you you look at here we have uh, electrical network translational mechanical system and we also have a rotational me mechanical system all um, the, the 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 flow is the same firstly from a physical system we come up with a transfer function or maybe differential equation and later on we get into the state space model however for this course i will emphasize on the translational mechanical system so you're not going to find um, any question in your um, assessment regarding electrical networks as well as uh, rotational mechanical system. So I scope down our system into um, what do you call it um, mechanical uh, translational mechanical system. So you might um, find that in your assessment, maybe test two and as well as in uh, final exam, the question will come up, uh, come out uh, solely from this sort of um, system. Actually, this is the tips for you guys. So please uh, do some uh, background studies on how to come out from uh, uh, the free body diagram uh, from the physical system and from the free body diagram into a differential equation. This is the thing that you need to know, which is uh, beyond um, uh, what we have learned in uh, this course. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Any uh, questions? So far, no. But okay. I have question regarding on the uh, the chapter from chapter six until chapter ten. So basically, chapter seven. Uh, in this course, you will just go through right. Doctor will just go through chapter seven. Since Dr. Uh, said uh, we're not included in test two final and the assignment. Yeah, I will um, provide you with the lecture notes of the chapter. Okay. Okay, sure, Dr. Okay. All right. Um, I think we get into the example over here. How do we construct states equation from a differential equation? All right. Okay, there, there are steps over here that you need to follow uh, if the first one before you get into the steps you need to have in mind um, the number of state variable that you should have in your um, uh, state equation so here okay the dimension of the state equation or number of state variable should equal to the order of the differential equation. So here you have a, a, a rough idea on how many uh, state variables uh, you should have in your system based on the uh, order of the differential equation. Okay, then we get into the steps. Uh, the steps is uh, the first, uh, first step, we let one state variable equals to output y, uh, the second step, we let one state variable equal to derivative of the output. Later on, let one state variable equal to n minus 1 derivative of the output, where n is the order of the differential equation. And the fourth step, we, we try to find the derivative of each of newly defined state equation in terms of the state variable and the output. And for the final step is write the state uh, output. In other words, this step can be explained from this uh, equation. The first one, x1 is considered our state. Yeah, first state we define 
we define our first state as our output y our second state is the derivative of our output our third state is our uh, equals to the second derivative of our output so here we have x1 equals to y x1 x2 equals to y dot x3 equals to y double dot and from this three equation we will try to write it into a matrix form okay maybe uh, it will be clearer if you look at the example okay let's say we have x1 dot equals to x2 x2 dot equals to negative 2x1 minus x2 plus 5u y equals to x2 so from this sort of system how do we set or how do we come up with the state space um, model the first thing that you need to know that the state space model is given by two equation the first equation is equation of x dot that is the state equation and our second equation is y uh, equation involving y equals to cx plus du that is our output equation basically the state equation also inform us or give us information about the output as well okay in this case you see you have this is the simplified differential equation that we have we have x1 dot and also x2 dot and if you look at this uh, equation this is um, d dx over dt and this is dx over dt as well d, this is dx1 over dt this is dx2 over dt and if you look the order of the differential equation we have two differential equation over here the first one is the first order differential equation and the second one is the our sec, uh, first order differential equation as well that is the highest order of our differential equation in other words i would say that in this I, I would say that roughly in this system we have about two states variable so we have x1 and also x2 basically it's very clear over here we have x1 and x2 as our state variable based on the equation that we have over here however i would like to uh, let's say uh, give you a rough idea of what uh, like a cross check between what we have over here and what we've known uh, previously from the definition okay now we have uh, two different equations and our objective is try to set up the this equation in terms of its form okay if you look at the uh, state space model over here we have two state variable which is x1 and x2 we have one input uh, matrix which is u one times one input matrix and for matrix a we have two by two uh, state matrix and we have um, two by one uh, input matrix known as b and the rest will be uh, for matrix c we have one by two and here we have uh, since we don't have any disturbance over here so we consider this one as a zero okay maybe i'll bring this question up here how and how do we match this question with our answer over here can you see the question or should i yes I can see that okay the first equation we have x1 dot equals to x2 how do we come up with this sort of matrix first we need to know that the left side should be x dot this one should be x dot okay I try to 
question. Okay. Eh, where's the pen? How do I annotate this one? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Normally we have pen over here. Oh my god. How do I annotate this one? Eh? We have, we should have some tab over here. Okay. Anyway, maybe I'll find. Uh, I'll try to solve it later on. Do you have class after this? Uh, for me, I have class on ten thirty. Or delay to ten thirty. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll try to finish up. Um, uh, at maybe. 10, 5 minutes. Okay. I, I try to finish this example first. Right. Uh, now we have to, okay. What is this? Right. We have um, this equation where we have x1 dot equals to x2, x2 dot equals to negative 2x1 minus x2 plus 5u. Basically, we try to set up these two equations over here, okay? We try to set up it uh, at, uh, as our state equation. x1 equals to x2 means that x1 equals to 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times u. So that is for our first equation over down uh, over here x1 dot equals to 0 times x1 1 times x2 plus 0 times u and our second equation can be written down here we have x2 dot equals to negative 2 times x1 okay plus negative 1 times x2 plus 5 times u so these two equation is represented uh, can be represent or can be represented in the state space uh, mod uh, in state space equation known as our state equation at the top of here. And for the output equation, where for output equation we have y equals to x two, so meaning that y equals to zero times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times u. So this equation basically uh, is the representation of the equation of y over here. I think um, it's better if I can um, write something over here, but uh, I don't know why my... Um, PowerPoint, uh, no, not working for the uh, annotation. Maybe uh, I try to figure out uh, later on, and in my next class, uh, maybe we try to. Okay, maybe this. All right. Okay. Good. Ah, okay. Good. Good. All right. Uh, let me start again. This x1 equals to x2, okay, coming from this element. This one, two, three, four, and five. It is, if you get uh, into the upper part of this uh, equation, x1 dot equals to x1 dot equals to 0 times x1 
um, plus 1 times x2 okay, plus 0 times u. So this equation, if you simplify it, okay, is basically gives us this equation. All right. Now, for the second one, for x2 dot equals to negative x2, uh, negative 2x1 minus x2 plus 5u is given by this element. Okay, this element, again, it will multiply by this part and also this 5 multiplied by u. So here we have x2 dot equals to negative 2 times x1 minus, sorry, plus first, plus minus 1 times x2. Okay. And finally, we have minus, uh, sorry, plus 5 times u. Okay. If you, again, if you simplify this equation, it will give you back this equation. And the final, our final equation is the output equation. Okay, this maybe I should, uh, maybe create this, okay. Our final equation, which is y equals to x2. So it is given by this equation, uh, this part times this part, and plus this part. Okay. Looking at this particular equation, we have y equals to 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times u. This equation, if you simplify it, will lead you guys to this equation. And one thing that you need to remember is that the setup of these matrices, if, okay, if we have this C matrix as uh, set up using this kind of arrangement, okay, okay if you change the C matrix into a two by one matrix, I think it's not, it will not gonna work out because because here we have x1 and x2 always in two by one or always in a column vector if you try to uh, build your c matrix also in a column vector the multiplication cannot be performed instead this uh, violates the uh, rules of uh, matrix multiplication, which is cannot be done over here. However, if we have 1 times 2 multiplied with 2 times 1, then it, this 2 will give us a 1 by 1 matrix. Okay. It uh, allow you to multiply, multiply those two matrices. Okay, um, I've shown you uh, the first example of um, this um, topic. Maybe uh, on Tuesday, we will continue um, talking about uh, other examples. And at the end, maybe we try to have a look at our real physical example uh, in terms of a, a translational uh, mechanical system. Okay, I think with that, um, we should stop 
um, our class and um, I re I'm really uh, apologize um, for you guys um, since okay um, 